I welcome you again to uh, the lecture series on main group chemistry. In my last lecture I was discussing about the chemistry of hydrogen and when I just concluded I gave the method of preparation of hydrogen using uh, several methods. And now let me discuss the method of preparation of uh, deuterium or uh, deuterium uh, compounds such as water D2O that is also called heavy water. So, industrial production of deuterium is from ordinary water that means uh, as I mentioned the ocean consists of 99.9% .9 of water that is H2O and 0.02 percentage of D2O and this is the major source of D2O and separating out the heavy water from ocean water is carried out by two methods that is called Gerdler sulphide process and distillation and few other methods are also have been employed. Okay. So, the Gerdler sulphide process or Gibbs Pavic process is an industrial production method for filtering heavy water from natural water. And of course, uh, several compounds of course, the major source of deuterium compounds is essentially D2O. Using D2O several other compounds have been made. For example, uh, let us consider uh, the reaction between calcium carbide and when it is treated with uh, D2O, it forms deuterated acetylene plus calcium deuteroxide. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, once after preparing acetylene, one can do 2 plus 2 plus 2 cyclo addition uh, using an appropriate method to generate deuterated benzene. For example, 3 equivalents of deuterated acetylene can generate C6 D6 that is deuterated benzene. Of course, here we are using a catalyst. Okay. And lithium nitride is also very reactive and it undergoes readily hydrolysis to form lithium hydroxide and ammonia. So, that method is also used here. Lithium nitride on treatment with uh, D2O readily forms lithium deuteroxide plus ND3. That means, if you want to make uh, deuterated ammonia for some experiments, one can conveniently prepare by uh, treating lithium nitride with D2O. And one can also make several other compounds such as DCL. D2SO4 or D3PO4 using appropriate reaction conditions and appropriate starting compounds along with D2O as the major source of deuterium. So, let us look into the chemistry of hydrogen with this information. Let us look into the chemistry of hydrogen and hydrogen. Uh, exists in the form of a dimeric species we all know and here HH bond dissociation energy is plus 436 kilojoules per mole. It is unreactive at room temperature, but in the presence of a catalyst or at higher temperature, it reacts with most of the elements in the periodic table. In fact, at higher temperature it reacts violently with oxygen to form H2O and atomic hydrogen is highly reactive. And hydrogen is capable of combining with nitrogen, oxygen and chlorine to form covalent hydrides. Okay. And atomic hydrogen can be produced by passing an electric discharge through a low pressure of hydrogen. Okay. That means, uh, one can pass an electric discharge through a low pressure of hydrogen molecule to generate atomic hydrogen. Atomic hydrogen is very, very reactive. And when it combines with other elements, it usually forms 
three type of chemical compounds. That means we know the fact that it can lose an electron to form H plus or it can gain an electron to form H minus or it can share the electron with other element to form a covalent bond. Okay. So, that means uh, for example, uh, when you remove that electron, ionize that electron it forms H plus which has no chemical existence that means it cannot exist in its free form similar to several other cations, but it is always solvated due to its extremely high charge density. For example, the moment H plus is generated, it readily combines with water if it is an aqueous medium to form H 3 O plus. Okay. So, it can also share an electron with many other elements to form a covalent bond and it can gain an electron to form the hydride H ion H minus species and attain 1s2 electronic configuration which is essentially isoelectronic with immediate noble gas helium. So, these are the three important type of compounds it can form H plus, it can form H minus or it can share an electron to form a, a covalent bond. Let us look into the electron affinity okay. uh, for hydrogen it is minus 69 kilo joules per mole and whereas in case of chlorine it is minus 369 kilo joules per mole. And let us look into the bond dissociation energy of uh, uh, several other compounds HH I mentioned it is 436 kilo joules per mole. In case of chlorine it is 242 kilo joules per mole and in case of uh, CH bond it is 414 kilo joules per mole and NH bond dissociation energy is 391 kilo joules per mole whereas OH bond dissociation energy is 460 kilo joules per mole. So, that means uh, elemental hydrogen is a very good reducing agent. It can reduce many metal oxides to metals for, and in all such cases H2O is essentially the byproduct and also hydrogenate many unsaturated organic compounds containing C double bond, C triple bond or C double bond O to the corresponding saturated analogs. That means essentially it can reduce either C triple bond C or C double bond C or C O to the corresponding saturated compounds and compounds produced on combining element hydrogen with an element are essentially called hydrides. That means whether H minus, H plus or it is forming a covalent bond such compounds are essentially called as hydrides. Okay. So, let us look into this uh, different type of hydrides that means we have now three different type of hydrides one is ionic hydride, another one is covalent hydride and one the last one is metallic hydrides. That means, metals with the electronegativity less than 1.2 form ionic hydrides. In this case essentially delta plus, delta minus will be there or you can also call is plus and H minus. That means, with metals having electronegativity less than 1.2 means they have to be alkali metals or alkaline earth metals. So, alkali metals or alkaline earth metals when they combine with hydrogen form ionic hydrides and hydrogen behaves very similar to halogens in these compounds as both are one electron short protein next inert gas configuration. And elements with electronegativity in the range of 1.5 form covalent hydrides and covalent bond get polarized from delta plus to delta minus depending on the electronegativity of values. That means, when it forms a covalent bond we come across two different type of covalent bonds. One is polar covalent bond, one is non polar covalent bond. When the electronegativity difference is marginal it is non polar covalent bond. When the electronegativity difference is remarkable then depending upon the electronegativity of uh, the combining atom. So, hydrogen can carry either plus charge or minus charge. For example, if you look into the HS bond, in HS bond H carries delta plus charge because sulfur is more electronegative and whereas in case of BH hydrogen is more electronegative as a result H 
H carries minus charge and similarly in case of gallium hydride also H carries negative charge. So, this is how one can classify the covalent hydrides into polar covalent and non-polar covalent hydrides. Okay. So, I have listed here some hydrides of uh, uh, p block elements that is group 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. And in case of group 13, the simplest hydride one can think of is BH3, but it readily undergoes dimerization to form B2H6. So, simplest one is B2H6. And in case of uh, uh, group 14, especially with carbon, we have three different type of hydrides having this formula shown there CnH2n plus 2 and CnH2n and CnH2n minus 2. So, aliphatic, alkenes and alkynes. And similarly with group 15, almost all elements form trivalent tricoordinated hydrides. For example, NH3, ammonia, PH3, phosphine, arsine and stibine. In case of group 16 elements, they form H2O, H2O2 hydrogen peroxide, H2H hydrogen sulphide, hydrogen selenide and hydrogen telluride. And with group 17 elements, it forms hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide and hydrogen iodide. Okay. And of course, here one can see in the polarity of the bond by looking into the electronegativity of the hetero atom that is making bond with hydrogen. And, and here I have listed some common molecular hydrogen compounds and their traditional names. So, B2H6 is called diborane and CH4 is methane and I SiH4 is silane and similarly germanium hydride is germane and tin hydride is stannane and of course, NH3 we have the name ammonia and PH3 is called phosphine, ASH3 is arsine, SPH3 is stabine and H2O is water and of course, water is not the right uh, uh, name for uh, uh, H2O, it should be called as oxane and H2S is hydrogen sulphide. In the same line, if you want to call, it is appropriate to call it as sulfane and in case of hydrogen selenide, it should be called as selenane and tellurinane. But however, those names are not common. Let us go with the traditional names uh, suggested by textbooks. So, water still it should be called as water, hydrogen sulphide, hydrogen selenide, hydrogen uh, telluride. And let us look into the synthetic methodologies we come across for uh, making hydrogen hydrides, different kind of hydrides. One is the direct combination of an element with hydrogen. So, uh, the second method involves the reduction uh, of a halide or an oxide. So, that means we have several methods to generate these hydrides or hydrogen compounds. One method is the direct combination. The second method is reduction of a halide halide or oxide hydrolysis of compounds such as metal phosphide, carbide, silicide and boride hydrolysis. of metal. Metal phosphide will give you phosphine, carbide will give you hydrocarbon, silicide will give you silane and boride will give you borane. Okay. So, another method is interconversion of hydrates. <coughs> conversion of interconversion of hydrides. Okay. Of course, one can use several methods. The important method used is, is subjecting the hydrates to electrical discharge that is very frequently used in the case of boron hydrides to prepare higher boron hydrides.
Okay, so let me give uh, in each case at least one example. Direct combination uh, is I can show you here. In case of direct combination, example is take H2 and combine with O2 to give 2H2O or take H2 combine with Cl2 to give 2HCl. Okay. And then a reduction of a halide or an oxide I mentioned. Let us take uh, SiCl4 tetrachlorosilane, treat this one with lithium aluminum hydride. It gives silane plus LiAlCl4. Of course, one should remember these reactions has to be carried out in non aqueous medium. Okay. And hydrolysis of metal phosphide, I will give one example. Let us consider calcium phosphide. Treat this one with uh, water, it gives 2 pH 3 that is phosphine and 3 equivalents of calcium hydroxide. Okay. So, as I mentioned, one can use interconversion method in which the hydrates are subjected to electrical discharge. For example, let us take germanium hydrate such as GeH4, this can give you Ge2H6 plus Ge3H8 very similar to ethane and propane and plus higher hydrates, but these higher analogs of germanium are not stable. Similarly, B2H6 on heating to 100 to 200 degree centigrade, it gives B4H10 plus H2, for example, you take two equivalents. And similarly, uh, instead of heating 100 to 200 degree, if you heat it to 20 degree centigrade, it gives B5 H9 plus 6 H2. So, so, these are some more methods of preparation of uh, various hydrates and let us look into the properties of uh, these hydrates. Covalent hydrates of P block elements are reducing agents. So, that means all P block hydrates are essentially covalent in nature and they are all reducing agents. Some of them spontaneously burn in air while many other hydrates require a spark to initiate or trigger the reaction. Okay, for example, and let us look into SiH4, it readily reacts with uh, oxygen to form silicon oxide or silica. Whereas, CH4 does not readily react, but uh, with a spark it readily reacts with oxygen to form CO2 plus H2O. We looked into the properties of covalent hydrates and ionic hydrates. Let us look into metallic hydrates, elements such as transition metals and also lanthanides and to an extent octanides absorb variable amount of hydrogen to form non stoichiometric metal hydrates, which retain most of the properties of the metals. Example hardness, conductivity and luster. However, they become little brittle in nature. So, in these hydrogen occupy interstitial tetrahedral sites in a closed packed metal lattice. So, lanthanides can also take up hydrogen 
in octahedral sites giving ionic MH3 phases. For example, we have in this non stoichiometric compounds, example I will write here PD H with uh, okay, uh, 0 6 non stoichiometric and in case of vanadium hydride we have a ratio of 1 is to 1.6 and here we have 1 is to 0 0.6 and here we have 1 is to 1.6. In these compounds essentially they are not really combining uh, with uh, metal, but they occupy interstitial sites. Uh, they can be the tetrahedral or octahedral depending upon the metal with which it is combining. And let us look into the compounds containing H plus ion. Removal of lone electron from hydrogen atom gives H plus ion. That means once the, the lone electron present in 1s orbital, it is ionized, it generates H plus and conversion of H2 into gas phase that is H plus requires a large amount of energy, it is not very easy. So, let us look into this equation here. Essentially, you have to ionize from H2 two electrons to generate two H plus gaseous species. The enthalpy of this reaction is very high that is equal to 3054 kilojoules per mole. So, H plus generated in aqueous solution is always solvated by water to form hydroxonium that is H3 plus ion also called hydronium ion. Due to the delta plus on each hydrogen, they interact with oxygen atoms or water molecules to get solvated to have a composition. For example, these do not have an independent existence. This H plus does not have an independent existence. As a result, what happens the moment it is generated in aqueous medium, it readily combines with H2O to form H3O called hydronium or oxonium ion. Uh, due to the positive charge it is carrying, what it does is it interacts with the oxygen atoms of water molecules in its close vicinity and gets solvated and it will assume several composition. One such composition is H3O, H2O, 3 plus plus or it can also be written as H9. O4 plus okay, H9O4 plus. Okay. So, let us look into it. Uh, we have uh, H3O plus is there and here uh, hydrogen atoms carries delta plus charge. So, as a result it will start interacting with the neighboring H2O molecule with O directed towards H. Similarly, one more because here uh, because again pol due to the polarization delta ca oxygen carries delta minus charge and they orient in this fashion in all the three direction that means three such water molecules will orient and they establish a interaction and this interaction is called hydrogen bonding interaction. Okay. And these hydrogen bonding interactions are very strong when the OHO angles are linear or close to 180 degrees. You can see here you can see here uh, this delta plus is there and O with the delta minus will be oriented and similarly here and similarly here. This accounts for the H3O, H2O three times having a composition of H9O4 plus. Okay. So, what are these hydrogen bonds then? Uh, you can see here this H2O is there and another H2O orients in this fashion uh, to establish a bonding here and this is called OHO, this is called hydrogen bonding interaction and as I mentioned this hydrogen bonding interaction is very strong when this angle at H is 180 degree or linear. Okay. So, when that happens, okay, when hydrogen is bonded to the highly electronegative elements such as fluorine, oxygen, chlorine or nitrogen there exists a secondary interaction due to the partially charged ions exist in the 
mixture that means delta plus and delta minus. So, partially positively charged H and partially negatively charged electronegative atoms start interacting to establish hydrogen bonding. This hydrogen bonding is very strong when we have fluorine and oxygen and to an extent in case of chlorine and nitrogen. So, remaining elements do not have any inclination to establish hydrogen bonding and even if there is any hydrogen bonding is there with sulfur and uh, uh, hydrogen they are very very weak and they can be ignored for all practical purposes. The most strong hydrogen bonding we come across when hydrogen is in the vicinity of fluorine, oxygen, chlorine or nitrogen. Let us look into the trends in melting point and boiling point for P block binary hydrides. So, generally the melting and the boiling points of a series of related molecular compounds increases with increase in the molecular size owing to an increase in intermolecular dispersion forces. This is seen for example, along a homogeneous series of alkane for example, you take methane, ethane, propane, butane and pentane both methane and ethane are gases and propane and butane are also gases, but pentane is a liquid low boiling liquid and also the boiling point increases. So, here intermolecular dispersion dispersive forces increases with the increase in the size because more such sites are available for interaction as a result the melting and boiling point increases. Okay. The melting and boiling point of P block hydrates can be compared for group 14 elements hydrates follow the expected trends what I had discussed. But in case of group 15, 16 and 17 elements the first member of the group has a different melting and boiling point compared to higher congeners in those respective groups okay. and this anomalous behavior can be explained again using hydrogen bonding interactions. For example, in case of group 15 we have ammonia and phosphine, ammonia shows a remarkably high melting and boiling point. Similarly, oxygen in case of water shows remarkably high melting and boiling point. So, these properties can be correlated with their ability to form very strong hydrogen bonding interactions and HF also shows you know extensive hydrogen bonding interaction. So, that means especially why uh, first members of the groups of 15, 16 and 17 show anomaly in their melting and boiling points can be correlated with their hydrogen bonding abilities. So, let me discuss the hydrogen bonding concept in my next lecture. So, until then have a pleasant reading of inorganic chemistry. Thank you very much.